let's talk now about bonds a little bit more in detail, um, at least as much as we can say without introducing randomness into our models. Now let me move to the next slide. Um, let's um, define a bond yield, which is, this is usually how uh, the bonds are quoted in the market in terms of their yields. And <coughs> what the yield is, is really uh, the internal rate of return for a bond. So let, here is a, an equation which is going to define the yield of a bond. So we are looking at uh, yield is also called yield to maturity or YTM. Uh, and uh, the idea is to make the, the bond price equal to the present value of its future payments. Okay? And that's, uh, that's what this equation is going to be about. A little bit of notation here. There is the face value of the bond, which is denoted by capital Z. That's paid at maturity. Maturity is assumed to be m periods from now, m compounding periods from now, uh, where the periods are actually the coupon paying periods. There is going to be n identical coupons per, per year uh, in the amount of total amount each, p each coupon in the amount of C over N, where capital C is the total amount of coupon per year. Uh, the P is the, the notation for the bond price. So this is how we are going to define the yield. Uh, yield is going to be denoted small lowercase y. Uh, and so what, what on the left-hand side is the, is the uh, price of the bond today. Uh, on the right-hand side, first I, I have here the... Uh, present value of the final payoff, and the final face value payoff, V. So that's going to be in M periods, and uh, I'm going to use the compounding N times a year. So the annualized yield Y uh, comes in here with this discount factor. And then I have to add the present value of the coupons. Uh, each coupon is C over N, and, uh, and I just there is, they are paid from period 1 to period M, so I just uh, discount by y, well, y plus Y over M to the K. Okay, so these are the, the present value of the future payments. This is the, uh, this is the price of the bond today. Uh, the unknown is Y, right? We observe P today. You, you observe it, let's say, on internet. Uh, we know what the terms of the bonds are, how much it's going to pay in coupons. We know how much it's going to pay at the end. So the only thing we don't know is y. So y can be computed from here and that's called the yield or yield to maturity of a bond. Okay? And that's what is quoted. Uh, and uh, it's a nonlinear equation in y. It has to be solved in principle numerically. It simplifies here because this is the this is geometric series where all the payments are the same like for a loan. Uh, every coupon has the same amount, so you can simplify a little bit, but still you have to compute uh, y from here. Okay? Uh, so that's what it is, and there is no randomness here. Why? Uh, well, because we are only looking at today's price and the future payments that are known. And tomorrow the price is going to be different, and we don't know what it's going to be. Tomorrow, th that's where the randomness is. But I'm only looking from the point of view of today. Today I know P, I know V, I know C, I can compute Y. Today my yield is something, some number Y. That yield is going to be, in fact, random because I don't know what it's going to be tomorrow because the price will be different tomorrow. Uh, but at the moment I'm not modeling that. We are going to do that uh, much later in the course. But right now I'm not modeling this random mov movement from day one to day two and so on. I'm just looking from the point of view to of today what the current yield of the bond is. And that I can compute. There is no randomness. All right. uh, just a uh, um, small remark here that uh, uh, you know, higher yield corresponds to lower price of the bond and, and lower yield corresponds to higher price. Uh, that's uh, natural because if your bond is returning high return, that means it's cheap and the price is low. If it's uh, returning low return, it's made, it means it's expensive. Okay, so actually let's look at that in some graphs. So let's move to the next slide. So this is called a price yield curve. I have a yield to maturity here on the x-axis 
and have the price of the bond on the y-axis. And as, as we just said, the price is going to be a decreasing function of, of, of the yield. And so here's a bit, uh, a bit of terminology. If I say I'm, t I'm dealing with a 10% five-year bond, it means it's a bond that matures in five years uh, and uh, pays 10% of, it, of its face value per year. Uh, and typically, like for, you know, the standard example is going to be U.S. Treasury bonds as uh, risk-free bonds. So they would typically pay $100 at maturity uh, and then 10%, uh, let's say if it's a 10% U.S. Treasury bond, it would pay uh, um, $10 per year and typically every six months, $5. And so the, the, this compounding period would be six months, and it would pay 10 over 2 each period, which would be uh, $5. Uh, so, okay, so we are here looking at uh, different bo bonds paying different amount of coupons, 15%, 10%, 5%, 0%. 0%. And uh, naturally, the, the bond which is paying more in coupons, and otherwise equivalent, is going to have a higher price. It's going to cost more because it's delivering more coupons in coupons all right so that's that's the price uh, price yield curve let's move to the next slide this is again price yield curves but now i am changing the maturity the previous slide was or uh, in graph was for the fixed same maturity for all the bonds just different coupon percentage here i'm taking the same percentage like 10 percent coupons um, but for all bonds but they, they have different maturities so they have 30 year bond 10 year bond three year bond so what we can see here is that they all intersect at the point 10 and, and, and 100. So the question for you is why is there an intuition why all the bonds, 10% uh, coupon bonds, would intersect at 10, 100? What does it mean? It means that uh, the, if the yield, if the quoted yield today is 10% for that bond, the price is going to be 100 today also. Uh, why is that? Well, that's intuitively at least. Um, well, think about it. So, coupons are exactly 10%. If we say that the yield is 10%, that means that all the yield, all the return of the bonds, is paid through the coupons. Okay? So, uh, effectively, the interest that you are earning by holding this bond uh, is exactly paid through the coupons. There is no extra interest or, or the less interest. It's exactly the coupons re exactly represent the interest of the bond. So coupons pay the interest that cancels, so the price, there is no need to discount the price. The price is exactly equal to what is going to be paid at the end, the face value. Okay, I'm assuming here the face value is 100. Uh, so, so the price is going to be exactly the face value. It pays 100 uh, at the end, and it costs 100 now, uh, and the way this is, the interest is paid is exactly through coupons. Okay, so this may have, you know, you, you can have yield of 10% today and it may move to something else tomorrow, but if the yield today is 10%, uh, the price should be uh, 100 for a 10% coupon bond. Okay. You can also check that mathematically uh, if you, if you use the formula uh, for, for the yield and for the price. Uh, you can check that if the coupon is exactly equal to the yield, that, that you get uh, the face value as the price of the bond. Okay. Uh, the terminology is that uh, the bond trades at par. Okay? That's just a language. Uh, we say that the bond trades at par if the price currently is exactly equal to the face value of the bond. All right, next slide. So uh, this here is a uh, yield curve. So it's a, it's a different curve. Now on the, on the y-axis I have the yield and on the x-axis I have maturity and this is taken somewhere from internet uh, and I 
forget exactly what bonds, maybe US Treasury bonds with different maturities, and uh, the the and there are different types of bonds here, but uh, you just look at one of these curves. So so what you typically see in the market is prices and therefore yields, you can compute yields for bonds of certain maturities, right? So here is uh, one month, for example, here is one year, three years, and so on, 20 years. Uh, so you can see this, you can see this uh, curve, which gives you current, today's yields for a certain type of bonds, let's say US Treasury bonds, with certain maturity. And uh, they may or may not have coupons, uh, they typically do have coupons, but you can also compute what an equivalent zero coupon bond would be paying. So this is called uh, the yield curve, or sometimes also called the term structure of interest rates. Uh, the term meaning uh, dealing with time, the maturity uh, of the bonds, how the yield varies with maturity from the point of view of today. Okay. Uh, and this is what we are going to try to model at the end of the course. And this is harder than modeling stocks because, you know, with a stock, you just have one point today and then you follow how it randomly evolves through time. Uh, here, with a, with a one type of bonds, say US Treasury bonds, you have many points, uh, as many points as maturities of that particular bond. And this whole curve will be something today and something different tomorrow. So you have to you have to model the whole curve moving along in time randomly in a way that is consistent with each other. You don't want to have arbitrage with bonds between bonds with different maturities. Okay? So it has to be carefully done. We will do that towards the the end of this course. All right. That's the yield curve. 